The 500 sale milestone for print on demand sellers seems to be a really significant one in my experience. What I found is that when sellers typically reach that 500 mark, this is where things really start to change in their business and stuff starts ramping up and growing. Now, this is due to a few reasons. The first one is if you've stuck it out to make 500 sales, that really shows that you have it in you to actually stick with this business, do the work and actually move the needle, doing the things that need to be done to make real money in real sales. And the other thing is typically once you get 500 sales, you have an established shop that is actually generating traffic. Some of your products are hopefully ranking by now because they've been making sales. So that is leading more traffic to all your other listings. And if you're selling on a place like Merch by Amazon that has tier limits, at this point when you can sell more than 500 items at a time, this really opens up the opportunity to make huge profit every single month. So making 500 sales should be a huge goal of yours if you are just starting out. Now in today's video, I'm going to share with you some of the tips that I personally use to actually make those first 500 sales in not a lot of time. Now this was a few years ago, but I've gone through all of these and picked the ones that really still do work in 2024. And by implementing these, you can be just one step closer to actually making the next sale that's going to lead you to that 500 sale mark. So let's not waste any more time and actually just jump right into these tips. Now, the first thing I want to share with you is the niching strategy that I use to actually reach those 500 sales. Now, when you're in a lower tier or you're just trying to make your first maybe 10 or even 100 sales, sometimes the niching strategy that you're going to use could be a little bit different. However, when you are trying to reach 500 sales, you need to think about things a little bit differently and start looking more long-term. So in print on demand, there are typically like two different kinds of niches that you can pick from. So on one hand, we have evergreen niches. Now what a, an evergreen niche is a niche that really is about something that can be sold any time of year any year. So this could be a design like a shirt for a mom. This is not tied to 2024. It's not tied to an event that's specific to moms. It really is just a design that I could have been selling back in 2010 or I could be selling in 2026. It doesn't matter. Same thing with if you made a shirt about a coffee lover. That's not tied to anything specific. So we'd call it an evergreen design. Just like evergreen trees, they never lose their leaves. These designs are never going to really go out of style. And then on the other hand, we have trending niches. Now, trending niches are not anything to be afraid of. I definitely think you can be utilizing them in your business, but you have to be strategic with how you go about it. So a trendy niche, on the other hand, is going to be tied to something very specific. So this could be a date coming up, a very specific event, something that's only happening this year. And once that thing is over, these types of designs are no longer going to sell. So from just this year, there's a few examples that I can think of that are trends that are definitely great to grab onto, but then once it passes, all of that momentum kind of dies. So for example, we had a big solar eclipse that way back in 2023, I told you guys to be keeping an eye on this and making some designs. And so, so many of these eclipse designs ended up becoming bestsellers, making thousands every single month. So a lot of people who jumped on that trend early were able to make so much profit. However, once the eclipse passed in April, say a store had built up thousands of dollars in profit just making shirts about the eclipse. Once that date passed, their store is pretty much back to square one. Yes, they have a little bit of momentum from getting some sales, but if they hadn't been diversifying their products, adding other types of designs, once April 8 passed, they no longer are making any income. So that's why I really want to recommend not just sticking with only trends because you're not building a long-term business. Now, there's another type of category of niche that I also like to mention too, and that is holiday niches. Now, holiday is kind of a mix of both an evergreen niche and a little bit of a trend in that holiday niches, they really only sell for maybe a few months of the year. So a Christmas design might start selling as early as September, but when January rolls around, you're not really going to see a lot of sales for Christmas designs. However, this Christmas design could sell this year. It could sell in 2025. It could sell in 2026. It's not really tied to a specific year. So holidays are great to also think about investing in, in your own business. Now there's kind of a magic ratio that I really like to focus on 
one. And this is what I did when I was working on my first 500 sales is I dedicated about 50% of my shop's inventory to truly evergreen designs, things that I know would grow my business year after year. And I wouldn't have to worry about maybe deleting those eventually and adding new things. Those were going to build my business for forever. And then I focused about 25% of my inventory on truly trending designs. If I found a trend on a research tool like Merchant Former or Sales Samurai, I would definitely go ahead and put that in my shop, but I wasn't just spending every single day, only focus on trends. And then I dedicated about another 25% to working on holiday type designs. So anytime I was about two or three months out from the next holiday, I would be thinking about what holidays I could also add to my shop. Now, if this whole niching thing feels super overwhelming to you, I do actually have a really amazing free class for you guys. I will link it down below where I'm teaching you one of my favorite tools for actually finding really great niches and turning those into designs that really sell. You can just sign up down below with your email and then I'll send you all the details of how to actually access that class totally for free. Now, one of the next things that I think is really great to think about and work on when you are trying to get to those first 500 sales is how you can actually make your design process a lot simpler. Now, I am definitely not a big fan of just truly scalable designs. So what I mean by a scalable design is if you had a shirt that said something like best blank ever, and then you could switch that middle word for something like best mom ever, best teacher ever, best dentist ever. And they're typically very simple. And a lot of times you can really tell that the seller has just swapped out a word. It doesn't look cohesive at all. So I don't love to always use just a true scalable design. But what I do like to do is figure out some really simple designs that I can use for a ton of different niches and do that over and over again. So a great example of something like this is we've seen that that groovy wavy text has been selling pretty well for the last couple years. It's a really simple design style that you can learn. In fact, I have a full tutorial on it right here, but you could truly learn this really simple, just a couple step process to make a design like this. And you could really make hundreds of different designs in this style. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed with the design aspect of print on demand and they feel like they have to be making this truly original, amazing piece of art every single time they want to sell something new. But you really can do similar things over and over again. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. Find what works for you. And if you love that design style, see how you can use it for a ton of different niches and products that you're going to sell. And speaking of products, when you are striving to get that 500 sale, I really think you should be thinking about venturing outside of maybe just t-shirts. Now, when I was really trying to make those first 100 sales, I was pretty much only focused on putting designs on t-shirts, which was a strategy that definitely worked for me. But when I started thinking about actually expanding and making more sales and started to think about growing my business long-term, I definitely had to make the switch to adding other products. Now, one that really worked well for me was adding sweatshirts in addition to t-shirts because sometimes I found that the sweatshirt area of print on demand is a lot less competitive than just t-shirts, but you also could do a ton of other products as well. In fact, I've seen a bunch of new sellers skip t-shirts completely and just go for a more unique product that is going to get them into a lot more competitive spaces in the print on demand world. Now, if you're selling on a place like Etsy, I definitely recommend checking out Printify's full catalog of products that they have around 800 different products that you can sell. So if you wanted to try something unique, like if you wanted to do print on demand candles, you could do that. If you wanted to do something like tote bags or pajama sets, if you wanted to sell blankets or mugs, they have all of those kind of products. I'll link them all down below. But I really think that when you are trying to get that 500 number, you need to think a little bit beyond just t-shirts, just doing what is easiest and what you see everybody else doing. You're gonna have to start thinking a little bit more outside of the box and seeing how you can really stand out. Now, the other thing I really would be thinking about if you are aiming for that 500th sale or just growing this business long-term, and that is really diversifying where you are selling your items. So to get 100 sales, a lot of times people are doing this on one platform. This is the first place they've ever tried selling. They are just spending all of their time learning this platform, figuring out how to be a really successful seller on there. But a lot of times if you want to grow this business, it's a great idea to think about selling on a few different print on demand platforms. Now, the 
ones that I regularly recommend are going to be Amazon Merch and then Etsy integrated with Printify, who is my personal manufacturing partner, the one that I recommend so much. I'll again link all of their info to get started with them free down below. And then besides Etsy and Amazon, who probably are the best ones you should aim for, you're going to get the most sales on those platforms. I also like to recommend Redbubble, TeePublic, and Zazzle because you still can get some sales on those platforms. And I think they are a great place to add on. If you're already making designs for one of these other platforms, you totally can just add them to a place like Redbubble without doing a ton of extra work. Now, the reason I like to do this is because when you're selling on multiple places, you are just tapping into a lot more audiences. And for example, selling on five platforms, you really are only going to have to aim to make about hundred sales on each platform to reach that 500 number. And in the future, it's really going to help you grow if you are every single time you upload a new product to Etsy and Printify, if you're just going ahead and putting that on your Zazzle shop or your Tee Public, by the time your Etsy really takes off, your Zazzle account is going to have a huge catalog too that is hopefully generating you some extra income there as well every single month. Now, if you're just starting out but really want to actually scale this business, I have a complete video guide on how I would scale a brand new business from zero dollars all the way to six figures within your first year. So I will link that right here if you want to check that out next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.